video is okay? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. All right. You are fine. Okay, well, let's do a mic check here. Check audio and make sure everything is good. Looks good. I think it's just loading. Check mic. Mic. Got some people in the chat. Faraday, Evans, and Lotus. It should be live, so maybe there's just a delay. Can you guys hear us? Let me check my YouTube, see if it's streaming. Hello? I think it's going. Oh, yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. Yep. Hey, can you hear us, Evans? Okay, awesome. All right, so, hey, I'm not going to mess around here. We're not going to waste a lot of time. I have Lenny here from TriMirror. And basically, uh, Lenny created a plugin, or has a plugin called UDraper, which pretty much lets you dress meta humans. And honestly, one of the biggest problems with meta humans is really the lack of clothing, right? So, um, yeah, today what we're going to do is pretty much, he's going to show you how to install UDraper. And where I usually get my clothes from is ArtStation, uh, Marvelous Design, and CeeLo or Clo, whatever, like. Uh, whatever other ones you have, but yeah, can you hear me, Lenny? Yes, I hear you, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, so, do, do I need to do I need because? Uh, yeah, I can see okay, that screen. I, you might want to close that one. Yeah. Do Do I need to follow the chat? Or? No, no, no. I I got the chat. I got the chat. So okay, do you, you you just do your thing, and uh, I'll co right. I'll cover the chat. I'll cover the chat for you. All right, Jay. Okay. Again, thanks so much for you know uh, arranging it great eventually get in touch with you <laughs> so hopefully you will be a believer today <laughs> yeah man let's do it <laughs> yeah all right so uh as you said uh, let's try to you know go all the steps to, till the final result so uh you go to udraper.com you click subscribe your uh your plan for now because i'm already logged in uh, as myself and i'm already a customer so it gives me just uh, pay 29 right away. But if you are a new, a new user, you will get this for free. You need to log in, <clears throat> create your account. Everything's pretty much straightforward. Add to cart, and uh, probably it won't allow me to do uh, two items at once. Uh, so let's remove one. Okay, and from here you go check out, you give you PayPal or uh, your credit card and use it uh, free for one month and then we'll charge you. Don't forget to unsubscribe to, to avoid payments if you don't like. Okay, and then you will get an email uh, in your spam folder, most probably, but probably not. And uh, there you will get uh, a link to download and some instructions what what to do with it. So uh, I already have it on my computer. Uh, all bunch of different versions. This is the latest version, so let's start it. I uh, agree, and here it's actually an interesting thing um, to pay attention to. Uh, it will show you all possible um, Unreal Engine versions that you may have on your computer. And uh, some people install it manually, not uh, using Epic, whatever it's called. Uh, epic game launcher so it might not showing in this list um, don't be afraid uh, there is instruction how to install it manually from your computer after installation is complete uh, redistribution uh, redistributable packages it's some MSN uh, libraries Microsoft libraries and uh, basically that's it I will uncheck it just to save some time but you for the first time you keep it. Okay, next, uh, select location, install. While it's installing it, it will install it. So I have it here. 
it's installing it in program file 3D Draper right here. And so installing. And then here you can see that it copies plugin uh, files to Epic plugins folders. Okay, done. Uh, at this, because I already have it registered, uh, so it skipped this phase. But you, if you're doing it for the first time, it will ask you for your license ID, and uh, you will get this license ID in this magic email. And so you enter it, activate it, and every, if everything's okay, you're good to go. So if for some reason your Unreal Engine version is not listed in this installation list, it's actually going to be here. So you see program files, 3D Draper, you go UE, and all copies of uh, Unreal Engine plugin will be here. You go to, like, say, uh, 5.0 Draper. And uh, what you need to do now is to find your Unreal uh, Engine copy. Let's see here, program files, Epic Games. 5.0, engine, plugins, and all you need to do is just to drag this guy here. Boom. Uh, okay, replace, skip, whatever. So it will copy it to your Unreal Engine plugin folder, and that's pretty much it. Now let's go and launch our Unreal Engine. And uh, I'll start with my project. By the way, everybody's hearing me okay? My screen, everything's okay? Yeah. How's it's, everybody it's doing? It's good. It's good. I was okay. checking in the chat. Good. Yep. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, while this is loading, um, 5.02, I actually just installed this recently. Um, but, yeah, this is what I'm hoping to do is actually have my own... Um, my own closet or costumes in U Draper, because again, using marvelous design clothes. Obviously, we're gonna have some limitations, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for majority of the clothes, for me at least, I think I can probably start using U Draper instead of having to rig the clothes manually, which is super difficult. So, but yeah, go ahead. Did it load up yet? Uh, it's starting. Okay, okay. So, so uh, well, I'll talk about a little bit more. So, basically, you know, Lenny and I were talking last year, and I, you know, it was asking me about some clothes and stuff. And you know, I, I love cyberpunk, so you know, I, I kind of sent him a bunch of the clothes that I have that I wanted, and he said, "Yeah, let's go check it out to see if it works." And this is actually one of them right now. Are you doing the cop first, Lenny? Uh, well, I'm trying to open it. Uh, okay, yeah. so because I uh, <clears throat> because I wanted to do like a clean installation, so I had some clothes on the guy, but because I turned the plugin off, it gave me a bunch of um, errors. So okay, so for you guys uh, who are starting it for the first time, you just go to your plugins, go to Draper, uh, and enable it. And obviously, you need to restart now going to restart uh, meantime actually i wanted to um let's see okay i guess i open my outlook and uh, no i think it doesn't like chrome <laughs> yeah don't don't open your email man it's personal Why? stuff in it <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, I Style? Have not, I have nothing to hide. You have nothing to hide but, oh. but clothes, right? Hey, what's up, Style? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so... Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Okay, anyway, so uh, what I'm just trying to say that in this uh, email uh, with activation code and all other instructions, there is a link to OneDrive um, storage of all sorts of uh, garments that we created with 3D Draper that you can use, but... Uh, Let's skip it for now. Let's focus on Marvelous Designer and how you can actually use Marvelous Designer uh, ready, ready to wear clothes, okay? So, all right, so uh, here we see that um, my uh, UDraper plugin is active. My clothes are back. So uh, I can now go to Marvelous Designer and show how, 
how I did it. Okay. So Jay actually asked me to do this particular uh, outfit. Uh, come on. Can we see it bigger? No. Uh, I just wanted to make it bigger, but anyway. Yeah, we can see so, it. It looks good. Okay. So uh, then we download it. So this po police suit. And let's open the original file. The one that we downloaded from ArtStation. Mm, that one, I think. So I actually did several steps to, to work with this project. Here it is. Okay. So this guy obviously is too tall. Uh, if we compare it with MetaHuman. So how do we get MetaHuman avatar here? Uh, this is uh, our usual uh, workflow. So let's say we have uh, MetaHuman, Jesse, and one. So let's start from the beginning. I will delete everything. No pants, no shirt, no tie, no vest. Draper simulation, Draper collider, that's it. Okay, uh, so what we need to do is to start with body and to add a collider. We start typing Draper collider, select collider. Uh, we introduce this component because MetaHuman consists of two different uh, meshes, one for the head and one for the body. And we, we need to, you know, put them together. Now, uh, pay attention that Draper Collider is parent to, to the body, not because many people uh, make this mistake. They just drop Draper Collider into MetaHuman uh, Blueprint, and then they get getting errors. So uh, just make sure that Draper Collider is parent to the body. And uh, let's build this Collider. What we need to do is just to add two components. Okay. And here I add Jesse. Hmm? Uh, it will be easy to do like this. Male, medium, normal, body, and just drag and drop here. Okay. Uh, and special attention to the, to the feet we may uh, use different one because I want to, um, no, not in this tutorial. Uh, wh when we're using like sneakers or some other uh, custom made shoes, then uh, I would use full fit, but this one is fine for now. And also pay attention please to a number of polygons because uh, so LED zero has 26, it's pretty high. And I usually recommend use LED one. You see it, you immediately drop to 7,000 vertices. Um, but I do not recommend go to LED two because with LED two, the body um, differ a lot comparing to the LED zero that we actually display. Okay, so here I select one, LOD one we're going to use for collider. And here we want to select mesh, Jesse. This is the mesh. And for the face or head, I use LOD three. I found it suitable. So actually the higher LOD number, the better from collision point of view, but if you go too high, like LOD four or six, the shoulders will differ from LOD zero a lot, and you will see this difference with your clothes. And sometimes I even go and uh, simplify entire head mesh, removing ears, removing eyes, mouth, everything, uh, to, to make it as simple as possible to bring the number of polygons down. But that's for another discussion. 
All right, so this is our collider. Let's save it. I'm a fan of saving everything before it crashes. All right, um, so this is our collider. Now we're going to add simulation. Uh, Draper simulation. All right, and uh, for now we don't do anything uh, except because we're going to export this model. I want this model to be in specific pose because this pose is not good for fitting clothes. So I want to animation asset and so if we clear it, this is the kind of default pose. Okay. Am I talking too much, Jay? Tell me if I'm uh, going into too much details, even if you want me to go faster. No, dude, you're right. fine. You're fine. I mean, honestly, like okay. I said, this is for people who are starting out. So honestly, yeah, the <laughs> the more the better uh, at this okay. point. Okay, super. Super, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so what I was saying is that this is default uh, metahuman pose, but uh, I'm not big fan of this pose because it has bent elbows. So I created a very simple pose with straight or almost straight hands, uh, arms. So let's go to... Yeah, I, I hate that pose too, man. <laughs> well, it's okay, but if you have long, uh, narrow sleeves, then it's... It's a pain to, to fit it, so I'm going to select, I call it fitting, uh, fitting two. So uh, all it does is just straighten the arms. All right, so this is the avatar we want to export uh, as a collider. So in Draper simulation, we go, uh, we're going to export collider. <clears throat> uh, just one uh, note about it. If we're going to uh, another another way to build this character with all these components is to go to the blueprint, actually, and add these components in the blueprint. I already created this child blueprint. Okay. Come on. Yeah, that one. Uh, so you can actually add all these components right here. So as you can see, I have body, I added collider, blah, blah, blah. The problem that Blueprint user interface is different and there is no uh, export collider button, so import anything. So you can add and configure your, uh, your components in Blueprint, but then actually to, to access all these buttons, unfortunately, you need to go to your scene and here you will have your these buttons. They're not available in, uh, in the blueprint. And sometimes people asking me, where, where are these buttons? They're here. So that's that's actually part of your plug plugin then, right? The export? Yes. Okay, yes. Cool, cool. Yes, it's part of plugin, but uh, the user interface is different. And for some reason, we only have it here. Sounds good. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we do now, we export don't be afraid of this message. It's a kind of heritage message because uh, we didn't uh, handle all sorts of possible avatars with different uh, structure, mesh structure. So this is just an information. Uh, so it's not an error. Maybe we need to change this exclamation point not to be so scary. So basically just say yes to all and you're good to go. And uh, let's export it somewhere. Um, so I have this folder plugin, a uh, whole bunch of. So let's call it uh, male, medium, normal weight, body fitting two. And just to be honest, create a new one, fitting two B. Okay. Great. Now we're going to back here. And um, in order for us to actually refit automatically this clothes, we need to start the new, uh, remove this guy, and import our avatar that we just exported. So again, this is where I saved it, plugin, and this is our avatar. 
please pay attention to centimeter scale. So we need to keep the centimeters all the time. And uh, okay, this is our guy. This is our GC. All right, so next step would be to create, because we want to automatically refit the clothes from the previous um, tall um, Marvelous Designer avatar. So this one is much shorter. And uh, Marvelous, they have this uh, out, auto refit uh, functionality. Um, so how it goes like this. You click here and you specify where your different uh, things located. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just showing that, you know, something like that. That would be your upper neck, then you create lower neck. So it's actually pretty fast and it will create some sort of area. So a suit eventually, and you select waist. It will create some sort of fitting suit. like this, and then you proceed with other parts. I already have this avatar, so I will skip it. Oh, would you like me to continue, Jay? Do you think it's worth continuing? Yeah, go ahead, man. Really? Yeah, because, I, I don't uh, think so. I, I mean, I, is, it, is it just getting all those pretty much lined up? Uh, yeah, you just specify where uh, different areas of your avatar correspond to different yeah, yeah, th that's fine. As long as if you think people can follow, if you skip over to yeah, the yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah, this is not this is not my kind of area. It's a marvelous designer. They have this tutorial and uh, documentation gotcha. how to how to create it. So what it's gonna do? So now, oh, actually, look, I, I made a mistake. So wrist, actually, it's not here. Wrist is here. Uh, I was ahead of myself. So <laughs> no, that's all good. Okay, so this is wrist, now elbow. Here you can be more accurate. I'm doing it like a little bit too fast. So what is it's going to do is to create some sort of um, uh, fit suit, like your, I don't know, uh, wet, wet suit, right? That would actually, you know, fit tight on the, on the avatar body once you specify all these different areas. So now shoulders. No, something like that, uh, like this. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah, it's so very, very, very fast actually. Once you get a hold of it. Uh, what next? Upper thigh. Okay, upper thigh. Uh, usually it means it's about one inch below your buttocks, or your avatar buttocks, of course. Something like that. Okay, looks good. Then it creates symmetrical one. And the knee, okay. Okay, uh, ankle. Okay. This is it. And if you satisfy, if you're not satisfied with like, for example, you have not very symmetrical avatar, you turn, your symmetry off and you adjust your, uh, it was left, right, right, left, right, whatever. And then apply. Okay, look at this. So that's it. Uh, my neck is a little bit off, but that's okay. All right, and that's it. And now we going, we need to save this, uh, this, this thing as avatar, save as. Uh, save, All right. So I click save and it su suggests me to save my avatar. So I'm going, I already did a couple of them. So this one, avatar three, save. And now this avatar is actually ready to, to be used in automatic fitting. So what, what do we do now is to open our recent project, poly, police guy. And actually, we can add, and we don't need the avatar. Hmm. 
Here we go. That's one of the good things about buying, because they actually, usually, most of the time, they send you the Marvelous file, right? Yes. That's good. Indeed. Okay. Now, um, now we need to turn our creativity on. <laughs> Well, first of all, uh, Marvelous recommends when you do refitting, um, for some reason, you have this five millimeters particle distance, which is too small. And uh, Marvelous actually recommend for outer fitting to switch to 20. So it will be faster. So we're waiting for it to switch to 20. Then we don't need to do anything with the cap, right? Because Cap is yeah, yeah, close. yeah. The the cap you can just bind it if right. you really need it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can uh, just attach it to a socket. So that's what I did with with my guy. Yeah. So the yeah. cap is just static mesh attached to the socket. Okay. So I go ahead and remove this cap. Um. Okay. Let's remove it. And there is this shield. Delete it as well. Okay, we are ready to go. Well, now I just select this thing, and here's auto fitting button. So I, I just press it, and it's supposed to auto fit it. And we can talk about something else while we wait. <laughs> Any questions so far, guys? Uh, no. Everything is good. They were just talking about okay. marvelous design and stuff. Uh, somebody asked, uh, you do have some clothes in there built in, but I was just telling them that marvelous designs, we're doing this because marvelous designs, they have a lot of good ones for cheap online. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the, cl the clothes that I have, um, we created them using our 3D draper. Let's take a look while, while we're waiting. So this is our 3D draper. And I have a bunch of clothes, and many of them are available to download. And, but they are currently in this 3D Draper format. So, for instance, let's see, I have something for plugin. So, let me just clarify this real quick, Lenny. So, this right here comes with the plugin, right? Yes. Okay. So, this, this, uh, this application, it's like a bundle, right? You, you have this. This application and um, plugins. All gotcha, right. Gotcha. So what what do we have here? Like for example, okay, some dresses. And this one is quite popular. So let's open. Actually, that was uh, Collider exported uh, before. And uh, so when when you save it or when you open existing file. It already comes with Collider. So you can actually, um, you know, undrape it and change your, let's see, uh, import OBJ. Okay, plugin. So I have a bunch of different. So let's see. see. FTOL, this one. Okay, let's try that. It's a character, centimeters, everything's good. Okay. And again, this uh, information about your avatar. All right, so this is another avatar. It's again made from MetaHuman. Um, it can be any other uh, CC3, CC4, does, doesn't matter. So you can adjust uh, positions, you can modify your entire scale of your avatar. So it's pretty much like Marvelous, not as maybe advanced as Marvelous, but uh, there are a few things that might be useful in the future. And then you start the simulation. Okay, so this way we drape it. Here we have a all, whole bunch of different fabrics with textures. This is just very quick view. And while it's running, uh, we can go ahead and export as, as a garment, uh, specify where you want to export it. And once you export it, it's ready to be brought into Unreal Engine and simulate that. Okay, I'm not going to do it right now. 
let's see here oh, magic look at this so we don't need our 3d draper we close this one so look at this i think it's cool so we have our suit refit to to this new avatar So from here, uh, you can you know do just small adjustments. I see that these uh, tags and shield a little bit off. Uh, this uh, color a little bit off. But but in principle, from from now you can actually export it as is. So you you uh, the only thing the only thing before we export, we need to take a look at UV editor. That's important. Okay. Because when you import it as OBJ file and want to reuse all these textures, you need to bake them. And you need to bake them in the first quadrant. Hey, Lenny, question real quick. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say export from Marvelous as OBJ, then export to UE. Can you texture in substance? And can you yes. import textures yes. in UE? Yes. Yeah, you yes. told me you can, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. But uh, in this uh, experiment, if you want to reuse, because the idea of you know buying something from uh, art station is to use the artwork completely, right? Yeah. So, so in this case, if you want to reuse this artwork, you need to you know squeeze everything into the first quadrant. And you do it like this, fit all, and it's terrible because the resolution will be horrible, of course. Uh, that's one of the reasons when I separate everything to separate garments. So what I do from here, I save it four times or five times, how many garments we have here, and then I export each one separately. So let's let's see. Because I already did it before, so I'm going to we don't want to save this one. Okay, so for this police suit I created five. Uh, oh cup cup is not a uh, garment. Anyway, so let's say we start with shirt. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's start with the vest. Anyway, so I saved it uh, as separate project, and I want to open with avatar. Okay. So basically, what I did, I just removed everything and add, uh, and only keep what I want to do, uh, what I want to keep for this particular garment. So this vest. vest that, for example. I would wear that to be honest, if I was a cop. Mm. Just like that. Uh, okay. All right, so uh, here we have our UV map. Uh, now it's much better looking. The only thing, keep in mind, uh, I actually skip very important, important step. I do not run any animation anymore or any simulation anymore. You need to get back to your let's let's stress on this thing because. It's very important when you import OBJ file into Unreal, the clothes should be fit well, and they should fit also not just on avatar, but on other clothes as well. So for instance, because this vest is topmost garment, and uh, we have like tie underneath, we have a shirt underneath. So everything should fit perfectly, because if we start simulation now, uh, the position of the vest will change, and then it will be a mess with the shirt and and the tie. So I I jump through this step. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back for a second. So I miss this step. I want to make sure that my suit fits well everywhere so i see some problem here with the with the color but i probably already 
fix it. Anyway, so as you can see, I fixed the shield, I fixed uh, the belt with the buckle. So everything should fit. From, from this moment, I do not start any simulation. Once I'm happy with, uh, with every, every garment in this suit. Probably I fixed this color as well. So let's go back now to my previous. Where is it? Recent vest. Okay. So then I make sure all the um, textures are located in the first quadrant, including all these trims and 3D objects like this. Uh, you see this shield, this tag, all the buttons, everything. Everything should be in first quadrant. And after that, we just go and export OBJ. Okay. Police suit. This is my vest. And we just say, okay, vest. Zero, zero, something, three, okay? We don't need to export our avatar. And if you want it to be as is, we want to select thick fabric. <coughs> now, let me check what's, what will be exported as well. All the buttons, buttonholes, stop stitch, fine, trim. Okay, looks good. And then in Unified UV coordinates, we need to select diffuse map and try to export everything. But in fact, Marvel's designer all, only will export you diffuse and, and normal map. I don't know why they give you these options. It, it won't work. Then I usually put here 196 for better resolution. For, sorry, for 4096, right? For the map. Uh, I didn't try 8,000, I don't know why, I'm just scared. Okay, centimeters, and we want to uh, save it in the zip file with all the textures. Okay. That's it. Sweet. Are we good so far? Everybody's happy? Yeah, except for Rudy, he's not happy. No, I'm just joking. Why? Yeah, everyone's good. Okay, good. All right, so here's our exported zip file. Let's extract it. Here we go. So we are we are getting these four files. So uh, OBJ itself, diffuse map and normal map. And that's a shame because there are other maps there. There is a roughness map, metallic map. For some reason, it doesn't export it. But what we can do for the future is to go fabrics. Um, let's see. Does it have anything else here? Anyway. So if you click somewhere here, it will show you all possible maps that are available in this model. Okay, so it's stored somewhere in temporary directory, just in case, maybe it's not necessary, but just in case I copy this directory and then I go to my uh, vest exported folder and I just save it here just in case. Maybe I would decide that I need some of these maps that I'm miss missing. Hey, Lenny. So, also, yeah. it's not 100% that they will include that, right? Like, you have to check in the description if, if the seller have all that included, because I've seen some that don't come with textures, right? So that's not like an automatic thing that they're going to be there. No, no, no. It's no, no, no. It's it's whatever they include in there. Gotcha. It's... All right. Yeah, I just want to make it clear. I want people to buy and they're like, where's all the maps? Okay, I gotcha. Right, right, right. Uh, well, again, we are just doing like simple, straightforward conversion, but 
um, probably you know all of all of you who has their own ideas you can use substance designer or uh, Quixel for your own materials or create your own materials uh, even with substance um, what was it I have it here it, it was called substance source now it's called Adobe substance sampler gotcha you can right. actually you can actually download uh, from huge library of all, all different materials from substance and uh, you use these materials instead of those provided with, uh, with, you know, OBJ or Marvel's designer file. All right. Okay. Super. Now we're going to. So we exported it. Uh, I usually um, see what's what what actually we exported <laughs> instead of just doing, blindly importing it. I, I want to see what's what's in there. I'm using Maya, but obviously you can use whatever you're using, Blender Max. Okay, so here our vest. And it's a monster. Okay, I, I, I knew it, it will be a monster. I wanted to show. Uh, it has almost uh, a million, oh no, half a million, six. Six hundred thousand. That looks good, but, though. No, uh, well, I don't know if it's good or not. I'm very cautious about number of polygons. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's my you know old habit. And uh, so, what like what actually creates this huge amount of polygons? And I think it's these stitches. Okay. So yeah, you can go ahead and export as is with all these stitches and all the other stuff but in my experience it's only visible when you get really close to your avatar okay uh, but from the distance you won't see it so why do we need to you know to use it and uh, reduce our performance just because of these tiny stitches so what you can do you can switch here to stitches top stitch go here and make sure that instead of obj you use texture all right here as well texture so this way you you actually go ahead and export another one you see i already experimented vest no stitch let's do another one vest no stitch uh, two. Okay. Just repeat the same stuff. Uh, we want it thick. Everything the same. Okay. Okay. So this one. All right. So let's compare. Ah, sorry. Accidentally double clicking. All right. So this one is almost 10 times less um, vertices. See this, right? So if I hide this one. Okay, so without stitches, it's just 57,000. And with the stitches, uh, with the stitches, it's 366, it doesn't matter. So like six, seven times more. All right, just because of the stitches. All right, you feel me, guys? Get rid of the stitches. No stitches. Anyway, uh, sorry? I said no stitches. Well, uh, that's just just to give you a heads up because uh, people want to have the highest possible quality, but it it comes with a cost of performance. All right, so be aware that certain elements are not needed at all. 
All right. So good. We we uh, so this way I exported all bunch of uh, garments for for this presentation. So we have uh, police suit. We have um, so vest you just saw. I have a shirt. All different kinds of exports. Uh, I'll show you the difference between them. Uh, pants. Also different kind of necktie and the belt. So we're good to import them right here. I don't need this one for now. So what we're going to do now is just to add garments to our simulation compound. So you see, it's like, you know, like a tree collider, draper simulation component. Now we're going to add garment, draper garment. And we can call it uh, pants. Pants, it will complain, let's say pants three. Next. So we're going to import, doesn't matter, another garment. Call it belt. Again, remember, they all fit together and they all fit to avatar because in OBJ format, we don't have any information about physics. It's just geometry. So it, it's solid geometry. It should all fit nicely, like a glove, everything. All right, so next shirt. Ah, sorry, again, ahead of myself. Garment. Garment and call it shirt. Shirt three. Another one, garment. And it would be tie. Tie three. And the last one, vest, uh, garment, we call it vest, put it into wrong position. Uh, vest three, sweet, save it, just in case. All right, let's start adding our garments here. So would you like me to import, you know, heavy stuff with all the stitches and see the, so you can see the difference in performance, I guess. No, I just do, do, yeah, just do the one that you know it's not going to crash. Cause I want to, no, no, it's, yeah. not, it's not going to crash, but you will see how bad the performance is. Yeah. I mean, sure. But, I mean, people, I think people already know more poly is going to be like terrible performance, but that's up to you, man. Right. Okay. Um, Okay, about performance, uh, this particular thing we just released recently because uh, Style Marshall suggested that it would be good and we had all that thing already done, so here we go. Um, but this is just, a, we still call it experimental because it was very, you know, quick without any optimization. So the performance is not the best. There is still room to improve the performance and do some other interesting stuff to do it, you know, faster and better. Um, so if you're not satisfied with performance, uh, I, I would still like to hear back from you. And maybe if there will be enough people, maybe we'll look into increasing performance and optimizing it. Okay, having said that, let's go ahead and um, pants. Okay. Pants, I think this one. Okay, let's try this one. So original ones with all the stitches, it was this one. And it was pretty large file, 30, 35 almost megabytes. And this one I already removed stitches, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, it's much smaller. Only five meg five, six megabytes. Great. Okay, select. And uh, it will suggest you location where to store the imported files. So I just put something like that. Now, texture, we want texture to be imported in, instead of skip. Although if you're going to use your own materials, you can 
use kit. Um, there is a possibility to use as the reference uh, materials and textures, but I mean, it will import it faster, but later it will be slower to, you know, if you're going to modify something, it will slow it down. So we're going to compress. Uh, disable closed simulation. There is no closed simulation with this approach. Skip validation. Um, again, experimental. You can click it. For Marvelous and Claw, validation will stand because we're looking that it's Marvelous or Claw, but for other sources or for BJ file, you, you need to select skip validation. And um, I recommend using skip unreferenced materials because sometimes uh, we notice that uh, different programs, like for example, Character Creator, export all, and does as well export also all the materials for avatars, and we don't need them. They will just, you know, give us more entries that are completely uh, unused. Okay, so we we and uh, it will give you notice that. There won't be any physical data. Simulation will be disabled. Good. Yay, look at this. Isn't it nice? So what's happening here? We have our pens. Now this folder contains imported uh, data. It's not an OBJ file anymore. It's imported data in our own format. Let's take a look. So if we go to pens. And this, uh, where is it? Here. So this is the location where we store just imported data, and it's our own format. So it, we include the texture in D DDS format and some other binary data for this model. OK. And uh, as you can see here, you have it's enabled. Simulation is off. You, you won't be able to turn it on. It will tell you. Uh, there is no simulation data available. Uh, but what we want actually to do with these pens is enable wrapping. And to enable wrapping, you need to click Save. And you will see the wrap is on. And that's actually what's going to drive your garment on this avatar. So uh, it's similar to Maya wrapping. Um, each uh, face or triangle of the pants has um, a reference on the body, and it will be moved together with the body. Wait, Lenny, that's already yes. that's already rigged. That's that's already on the body. Yeah, it's already on the body. Now, if I'll move the body, it the pants will move the, with the body. So uh, here's how it goes. So uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's turn wrapping off for for now. Yeah. And if now I'm going and change the, where is it, so body, if I'll use another pose. Uh, I don't know, doesn't matter. Okay, so if I change the pose, the clothes stays because it's rigid. But if I enable my wrapping, wrapping, okay. It will be like this. Whoa, that's crazy! Like, I mean, you don't have look, look, ma look, mom, no, no skinning. You don't have to like weight paint and stuff. No, no. That's that's magic. Well, it's kind of obvious thing that we used to have. It was there all the time. But for for us, it's kind of a little bit, you know. Um, I feel ashamed <laughs> that we're doing yeah. this thing. That's crazy. Because, uh, I mean, we, we, we want it to be simulated. I mean, the like real-time simulation of the clothes. But here we just uh, glue it to the body, basically, and we morph it uh, with the body. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about simulation here. So go ahead and save this just in case yeah. it crashes. Yeah, we'll talk about no, simulation. No, it, that's OK. That's OK. Let it crash now. I don't, I'm not afraid. Anyway, so what? Uh, so I'm so happy I can show you this fun stuff. All right, let's go back to our fitting pose because we need to put other garments as well. All right, sweet. We have our pants. What bugs me all the time that all all this collapsed 
trees, every time I change something, it will expand. And if anybody knows how to keep it collapsed, that would be great. All right, so we have our pens. And actually, at this point, it might be a good idea to edit. Click Edit and open uh, Draper Editor. OK, so now we have our JC character, and we have the pens, and we have all the materials. Actually, I again, my bad. I skip, skip it, skip, skip. Eh. <laughs> um, I, I jump through this step. I specify different materials for different parts if I want to modify them later on. So for these pens, I have, uh, this is main fabric called pen. And you can see it like this. So now we can control the material. So I just turn the texture off and on. And um, you know, here you can do this stuff. Or you can actually load your own texture. But we'll keep the one that we exported with Marvels. Normal, let's load the normal map, this one, okay. And also pay attention that there is UV and by default, it gives 10 millimeters. That's why we need um, this uh, texture to be fit in uh, the first quadrant. And this is the scale. It might not be visible well, but Okay, can you see it? Can you see the um, the stitches? Yeah, yeah. It... All right. So in instead of uh, using uh, OBJ or 3D models for each stitch, it's just uh, texture baked into the into the. Uh, Honestly, that looks that market. looks good for me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, super. Now, um, so yeah, so uh, I have different materials for waistband, for flaps on the side, and I'll explain later why, and for pockets as well, and even for fly. And we can modify this material separately, but uh, I'm doing it for, for thickness, actually. Um, okay, because we already exported this model as a thick model, right? So remember when we did this file export OBJ, well, let's do something again, test just. Remember I selected thick, right? So it, it already comes like thick fabric, but later on we'll export another option with, with thin. And when it's thin, you can actually go ahead and change thickness here. And I'll show you when it might be useful. All right, let's proceed with other garments. So we have our pants. Now let's do go ahead with belt. Here I have my belt. And I guess that's the one I would like to have. OK. And again, compress. Switch this on. It's okay. Can we see it anywhere? No. Why? That's funny. Where's my belt? <laughs> Did it export? Maybe it's just a different uh, file? No, wait a minute. You can skip the belt. I don't wear belts. No, 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 no. That's that's not right. I want my belt. Okay, let's check it out. Try another one. 
maybe I choose the wrong wrong one. Let's try this one. Okay. Compress. Well, tool input. Yeah, here it is. I I selected wrong uh, OBJ file. All right, cool. Now with pens, let's enable our pens. All right, everything so far so good. Don't worry about these issues. We'll resolve them as well. So with the belt, again, I want it to be wrapped, so I need to save it. And we go to to here. All right. So there is one thing here that actually in thickness, and it's called offset. And offset is a position offset world position of set. What it does, it moves, um, you know, this geometry toward the camera. So if I make it zero, it can go inside. And for waistband, maybe, maybe for waistband, I'll put zero as well. So here, it's, it's almost correct. And for belt, let's add a little offset maybe. 0 0.5, no, too much. Hmm. Anyway, we shouldn't worry about it. So this is how it's supposed to be. Hey Lenny, question real quick. Are the imported yes. files in the content browser or are they hidden in a plugin? Mm. Uh, you mean uh, they're here? No. So they're, they're, they're in your drive then, right? They are on your drive and uh, whenever you save it, where, wherever you save it. Um, not that one. Here, okay. So when you import it, uh, there is a place where you specify a location where you want to save this imported file. So they convert it in our UJ performer. Okay, so they no. Uh, the answer is not. They are not in your uh, content browser. All right, let's move on. So with this belt, so this is your belt material, which is you know looks a little bit supposed to be leather, but it doesn't look like leather, and that's why uh, actually it might be a good idea to keep the original files with roughness and everything else or you can override this material use another leather um, so you see there is normal texture but i don't like this texture let's see no you see it's almost empty so instead of using this uh kind of baked texture let's try to open the one that i saved let's see belt do we have it here? No. This one. I think. And it's probably DDS format. Yes. So these are, you know, maps that come with this uh, model, but it's not exporting them correctly. So we can go ahead and select it ourselves. So this is our normal map and then we can also add some roughness again as dds yes leather roughness okay so now we're getting some structure here Okay, better now. And normal map, we can make it stronger, All right? Okay. And uh, don't forget your UV scale. It's fabric transforms, and you can go like, you know, adjust a little bit the scaling, maybe like this. And to make it look like a leather, you do it with Fresnel. Uh, so, for instance, you can make fast power, and invert Fresnel power minus two. 
that would look more like leather, right? So you can play with this or create your own material and override, override it here. All right, um, another example. So this one is a uh, buckle. And there is not much here, but we want it to be more kind of metallic looking. So let's add some metallic here. Roughness, remove roughness. Hey, are you allowed to, um, are you able to edit it, the, edit it like a master material, the master material, or is it just doing it this way? Well, uh, okay, the, well, you can do it both ways. So we have our own materials kind of controls here. So you can do metallic, blah, 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 or even emissive material. So it will be glowing in the dark. Or you can override and uh, add your own material here. So if you drop your uh, native Unreal Engine material here, um, select override, you will use your material. Uh, it's a separate tutorial to, to talk about it. I have a video and a page on our website about it. All right, so um, so is it metallic enough for us? Maybe make it even more like this. All right, I think it's good enough. Again, don't forget to save because otherwise you may lose your settings. Save this one. Uh, they have this uh, cheating piece of uh, fabric, <laughs> belt to delete. It's actually, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's a black material here. It connects these two parts of the belt. It, it should be invisible. So we can make it invisible as well. All we need to do is to go to alpha and opacity to zero. Boom, see? So it's masked material with zero opacity. So it's invisible, beautiful. All right, now a final thing to pay attention with this, uh, you know, pants and the belt is their relationship. So we want to have pants closer to the body than the belt. And for this reason, first we have pants in this list, and then we have the belt. I can change the order like this. And you see, we have a little messy issue here. So again, it is done with uh, world position offset. It can be controlled with uh, offset in your materials. Here, with thickness, this offset. But in general, this order adds uh, offset. So if you have like pants first, okay, and belt second, it adds an offset to the belt. So I, I again have some issue here. Let's see. Zero. Ah. For the waistband, I also have offset, so I'll put it zero. Boom, everything's okay, and I forgot to save it now. It's time to save, perfect. All right, let's proceed with other stuff. Let's do the shirt. Um, all right, somebody gave me a Coke. Okay, so we're importing the shirt now. No stitches for now. Again, we want to put it like this and I'll create another folder. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, what should be on top and what should be underneath. So shirt should be obviously underneath the pants. It should be tucked. So I'm going to position it like this. All right. And notice that I already kind of simplify it. I'm not just remove the uh, stitches. I also removed all the buttons. 
and uh, whatever else is there because it it will be under the vest and we don't need it i mean why and uh, you know have more triangles than necessary right again we can mess with different materials but here i have only one material for now all right let's proceed next we want to import the tie did i save it no i didn't save it let's save it and it's wrapped now go further with the tie necktie this one this one compress boom 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 necktie to import okay nice again save it sometimes it needs to be reload but it looks okay so far so this small kind of crossing again it because of uh, world position offset and we'll take care of it maybe later if necessary and finally we need to import the vest i don't remember which one was it this one the last one All right, and again, save it to enable wrapping, reload just in case. Okay, so let's see, necktie, we want it to go down underneath. So we want to go ahead and put maybe offset to zero. Boom, gone, save it. <laughs> All right, so that's, Kind of first 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 iteration uh any questions so far uh nope not that i see man okay people are bored no just one guy no. style i think <laughs> his name is style marshall he said he's bored all right well he knows <laughs> i'm just joking no no he, well uh i assume he's bored because he knows it pretty well Okay, now, um, where is our uh, animation? So I created here uh, some sequence. Let's open it. All right, so we have some motion here for our guy. So some animation, facial animation. Everything's okay. And we can turn the camera on. So show us real quick, as you just pretty much drag and drop the blueprint and everything just comes with it, correct? Yes, indeed. Okay, okay. cool, cool. Let, uh, I mean... Yeah, I yeah, expand kind of that one right there, yeah. Okay, it's kind of obvious, but let's, uh, let's do it because some people sometimes asking how to create. It. Right, right, right. Yeah. If, if it's know. not too um, much. No, no, of course. I mean, I can talk as long as you want. It's your time. All right, so what do we want here? We want uh, add level sequence. Save it somewhere. Sequence, sequence. Police. No. No. Police. No. Zero to whatever. Stay. And then we just drag and drop our policeman here. We don't need control reads. I'll expand the timeline one, three, something like that. Should be enough. And then we add animations. Uh, what kind of animation? Maybe belly dancing? Yeah, Yeah. start with belly something dance. easy. Belly dancing should be good. Yeah, so as you can see now, the, everything moves with the body. I know. I know somebody who dances just like that. His name is Rudy.
That, All right, that, so... that looks pretty good, dude. Uh, okay, so we can hit play and he will dance. All right, that's all. That's all it takes. And then you add more stuff here, your camera, and the other animations, your face animation, and so on. And uh, so let's go back to our previous animation, open animation sequence. So I set up a uh, whole bunch of different kind of animations, walking, break dance, and so on. So, you know, walking, dancing, pistol, like this. All right, and we, we don't even need, because we disabled all the close simulation here, uh, there is no need for us to play this level. We just click here and it goes. All right. That's all what it takes. Now, I created a video using a movie render queue. And what I like to do, and I need to give you heads up, guys, because uh, Unreal Engine 5, they're using this uh, temporal anti-aliasing. And our clothes looks a little blurry, and sometimes really, really blurry. So for that reason, when you want to record good quality video, uh, I usually go and add anti-aliasing, and I specify eight here, uh, and specify override. Um, temporal sample, I've seen some tutorials that recommend to use more like a temporal sample count, I must say, say you guys that this algorithm is thinking of its own. So we found out that better to keep temporal sample count one and play with spatial sample count. Hey, you got a question? Yeah. Yes. In the, in the future, uh, will you Draper work say for like a you know like a third person character kind of game uh, kind of thing? Would that work? Say if you want to use your Draper clothes to for a game or something, is that right. something that you're well, looking into? No, 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 no. Well, okay, let's. Um, okay, let. There are two two issues here. One is uh, we are talking now about uh, video recording, right? And for video recording, you want best quality. Yes. Because it's not real time. Of right. Uh, so let's. But for real time, like you can you know, click play here, or you can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, like do standalone game, but you're still doing it within uh, Unreal Engine editor, okay? There is no standalone application. Uh, you, can, you can't build standalone application. We disabled packaging and it's done for a few very specific reasons. Gotcha, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, for for now. It's not for gaming. I mean, you can build your new game with uh, these clothes. Uh, we just prohibit it. For there, there are reasons for that, and we can discuss it separately. I got so we can just we can just blame Style Marshall. I think we can. All agree. <sighs> well, but uh, you can play it like uh, on your computer, and for example, you know specify in here you can go to your maps and specify your game default map and actually start playing it without launching your editor yeah yeah just you just can't package it is what you're saying yeah yeah exactly uh, gotcha because we, we uh, there are many reasons we can discuss separately no that's all good we'll just blame it on style okay. marshall we're good okay 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 all right so back to our uh movie render cube and uh, anti-aliasing. So this will give you much better quality without blur. Everything's fine. And I mean, I already created a bunch of videos. You saw them. Let's open them and see. Mm -mm -mm. OK. So city sample, saved, movie render. 
Okay, so you will get all bunch of these uh, th frames and you will put them together in other program like Pre Adobe Premiere. Everything will be fine. What I uh, find out that with this movie render queue and uh, especially with this anti-aliasing, if you don't use anti-aliasing, it probably will be fine. But with anti-aliasing, I notice that sometimes you know the the sync are not working properly especially when you you know have your um, animations built from different pieces so sometimes i notice that it's you know the sync goes off hey and lenny can, can you yeah. switch off motion blur real quick just to see what it looks like without uh in your project settings uh i already did it I oh mean, you did I, oh i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. you know, i i mean uh I, I already experimented with this. Yeah, I think they um, just wanted to see what it looks like without the motion blur. Because with with the internet, I guess it's you know making it. Yeah, you see, you see, it's zero. It's zero. I gotcha. It's uh, the blur is because of uh, this temporal anti-aliasing, and um, you know, in normal circumstances, yeah. you pretty much know where your pixel will be. But with yeah. closed simulation, you don't know where your pixel will be, and it creates this blur. Uh, right, if right, you right. switch, uh, if you switch to uh, until I see. if you switch to FXA, it gives you less blur, but it will give you some uh, jittering of pixel jittering. So, uh, in the video that I made for uh, this Matrix City with uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, first part, I was recording it uh, live, like screen capture, with uh, temporal anti-aliasing. And second part, where I have too many small bits and pieces moving, I switched to FXAA. But uh, it was uh, like real-time screen capture. Anyway, so uh, so what are we talking about here? Yeah. Right, okay. So problem with wrapping without simulation. Let's take a look. Here. So as you notice, Jay, you may have, and probably you will have some artifacts and not kind of natural behavior of the clothes when the clothes moving too far from from its original position right 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 because it's just wrapped to the body right uh, exactly exactly so it it may not be natural and same will be with the pants if he will start moving his legs yeah it might yeah. not yeah if it, it it might not be visible uh for this suit but for some others it will be visible so yeah. again i recommend to use um you know your creativity based on what kind of clothes you're using what kind of animation you're going to use and in some cases you actually can combine both and what i did in the last video that i showed you i created i modified this clothes in order to make them actually simulated and uh, in order to do that well let's go there and I think we are getting closer to to conclusion of this lecture. So let's open project. So for instance, for the shirt, um, project, I think it's this one. So again, for the short, I removed all these buttons. I don't need them. And then I exported this short, not for wrapping, but for closed simulation. And uh, we have this tutorial how to do it. So let me see. You have it in your channel for, for a simulated yep. one? Cool. Yep. Oh, yep. wait, 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 was, was that Cyberpunk Girl? 
that you did recently was that simulated or was that no, wrapped? No, it, it was it Okay, was Roger, wrapped, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's take a look. Right. So these these two are recent one. Um, no simulation, just wrapping. Got it. And uh, this one, the first one, uh, Marvel's designer to Unreal um, with simulation. This uh, this one uh, was part two. Gotcha. So it's right. a, it's just a little bit different. Uh, if you want to simulate your clothes, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, cool. Yes. Yes. So for uh, in order to simulate the clothes, you don't care anymore. However, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So let's let's be, you know, consistent and uh, look at all these things. Again, let's let's take a look at uh, fabrics. And here we have problems. So originally it was just one shirt, so one fabric for everything. But I know that main part of the shirt will be under the uh, vest, and I don't care if it moves or not. I'd rather actually to stick it to the body. So these parts will be material shirt. Now I want the sleeve to actually move in case there is some arm bending, arm lifting. So I want it, I, I don't want them to be glued to the body. So I create the sleeves, a separate material and assign uh, these sleeves to, to this material. So if I select this sleeves, I go here. Uh, where is it? Probably I, because I selected a line like this. And here, fabric sleeves. So I assign for both these sleeves different materials. I also created separate material for cuffs because cuffs are usually easily uh, teared away if you move your arms too fast. So I, I want them to, to be bound pretty well. And I also create a color um, as a separate material. I don't remember why, probably because to add additional thickness. Yes, I think for that reason. So yeah, create additional materials for the parts you want to modify later on in Unreal Engine. That That's the point I'm trying to, to make before you're exporting. Okay, and then I export as OBJ. Let's put it, let's go short. Short, thin, seam for simulation, whatever. And now again, I turn off avatar, we don't want it. And I also don't need anything, maybe except the graphics and what else? Not trim. I think graphics will give us this uh, logos. or print overlays, and I select thin material, that's important, and weld. And one, we export with unified coordinates, and we want to export this thing, okay, into zip file, okay. Okay, and in order to have the simulation data, we also need to export another option, uh, UV editor, and reset it to UV, uh, to the arrangement. So we basically will take the measurement of the patterns from this UV map. So we're using two exports: file export OBJ, and I call it patterns. Let's call it patterns two. And we don't need anything at all. We just want to make sure single, 
world, no graphics required, oops. And the Unify UV coordinates, but we turn this off. And we don't need any zip file, okay. So this way we can import, okay, let me close this guy. Huh? What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> this is funny. But that's okay, I guess. I will click reload. It will show. Okay, let's reload everything. Okay. So instead of this shirt, I want to import the new one with enabled uh, simulation. Shirt. Ah, sorry, we need to unzip it first. I think it's that one. All right, and then because we want to have this information about the patterns, we select, come on, this pattern. And again, compress. We don't check disable closed simulation because we actually want the closed simulation. Skip validation is not necessary because it's from Marvelous, it's fine. And reference materials probably, uh, I don't know, probably should be fine. So if we didn't make any mistake with UV map or anything, everything should be fine. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go back to the body. And instead of custom mode, we need to animation asset fitting pose. Looks okay. All right, so now we have our new shirt imported. This is our shirt. And again, we want to save it. So when we save it, we wrap it, right? Wrapping is on. So now it remembers its position on the avatar's body. And now we go, let's see uh, what we want to do with these uh, materials. So let's start with a short uh, main fabric, which is inside, everything inside. And I don't want it to move at all because if it'll start moving, it will, you know, go through the um, pants and everything. And I don't want it. I want it to be bound to the body. So we go to physical properties and uh, tolerance, let's say, I don't know, 22. 22 millimeters tolerance means that everything that closer to the body than 22 millimeters will be bound. And I think it's a good chance that most of the uh, short inside the vest and pants will be bound. And I don't want it to move at all. So stiffness is one, meaning that it will be, you know, so solid, gl glued uh, very well to the body. Not moving at all and save it. So did I change anything here? Yeah, save. Next, sleeves. Sleeves I want to move, but I don't want them to be ripped or anything. So uh, for sleeves, we can again select maybe 22 tolerance, but I, I want it to move a little bit or kind of mid range. I don't know, 66 millimeter motion, maybe even more, maybe 99, who cares? And uh, stiffness, let's make it 0 0.4. So it will move, but not too much. And save. Okay. 
good. Now, cuffs. Again, I think 22 millimeters would be enough. Cuffs, um, you can move them a little bit. Again, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, you can do whatever you like. Uh, how much cuffs can move? 55 millimeters, let them move. And uh, 0 0.5 stiffness. So move a little, but not too much. So to prevent in case uh, some fast motion, so something may try to tear it away. Uh, we kind of ensure that it won't happen here. Again, save. Now, another thing, since we're here, we can actually add fabric thickness. By default, it's one millimeter, but cuffs can be thicker. Why not to make them three millimeter? See, see the thickness increased. And the bias, I usually use half of the thickness. Okay. Save it. And last but not least, the color. Also, maybe a little bit thicker. I don't know, two millimeters. And uh, we actually can add bias more aggressive like this. So the tie will be underneath of it. I don't know. Again, this is something open to experimentation. You can experiment with this. And I don't want it to move much. So I'll add uh, 44 millimeters tolerance. And uh, I don't want it to move at all. Stiffness one will pre prevent it from movement. Save. All right. By the way, let's check the FPS. It's not that bad, uh, considering that I'm sharing my screen, so it's not bad. All right, so now we can try to simulate. It will take a while. Um, for some reason, when I first start the project and do the first uh, simulation, because it's a huge project, I don't know, it's thinking too long. So if there is any questions so far, guys? Um, just why, somebody asked why you can't use it in a package game, but you said there's like a lot of reasons, right? Well, uh, it's actually not, uh, okay, there are th several things. In order to package games, we need to give you all our C++ codes and we don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, that's reason number one. I think it's the main reason. Uh, so uh, for those who are actually pretty serious uh, about uh, creating their own standalone solution, uh, you know, reach out to us and we discuss how it can be done. That's the reason number one. Reason number two, uh, what kind of game you're going to do because this uh, simulation uh, requires NVIDIA high-end GPUs and uh, and Windows, so it's not going to work on any mobile platform or any consoles, right? So it's just for PC with high-end GPU. So the market for games like that would be relatively small. So I'm not sure that, but if this wrapping and uh, automatic skinning feature will find the users, we can consider that that can be like a separate, completely separate project, separate separate plugin without closed simulation, uh, doesn't, won't require high-end GPUs. So that might be a different project. But again, as I said, there is quite a bit of room of improvement here. Okay, so we're running our simulation now. Let's go ahead and check it out. Grab, uh, come on, can grab it, why? Huh, my idea was material editor. Why can't I grab it? Let's stop for a second. Let me see what's going on here. Mode is fine. 
Ah, I know why. Because we forgot to turn the simulation on. Let's see, short. Yes. So from the previous short that uh, we didn't simulate, this one is off. So we need to turn the simulation on. OK. Let's try now to save it, just in case. OK. Second time, it should start faster. OK. And check it out. Can you see that I'm moving my shirt? Everybody's happy? Yeah, I can so see. This time, yeah, so this time when uh, we start animate this character, the sleeves will be moving, and uh, you won't see much um, much artifacts because of just pure wrapping. And uh, look, uh, we still have some mobility for the cuffs. But even if I try to like really hard to move it, it will snap back to its original position. And that's how binding is working. So let me see. This is my shirt cuffs. OK. So I can actually, if I decrease the stiffness, now you see that I can really destroy it without. Uh, without binding, but if I'll increase, it will supposed to come back. Let's see if it will. Yeah. That looks awesome, man. And and it, will that work in that same like animation that you had in the sequencer as well? It would. It yes, would... yes, of course, of course, of course. So now, I mean, we can stop it now. Yeah, I'm, just, our... I'm just trying to break your computer. Uh, OK, go ahead, break. <laughs> um, okay, this is our sequence. But in order for us to enable this simulation, we need to first start the simulation. Right? Simulation started, and uh, you saw, you know, few, I don't know, milliseconds that uh, close get to the body. Uh, let me go closer, and we can. Um, but you see the uh, FPS still quite low. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you render this out, it's going to be simulated. And really, at the end yeah. of the day, for me, that's all that matters. I don't have to see the animation in the editor. Mm, you know? Right. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so, but we still can play it. It will work. I mean, the guy, let's go back a little bit. So he will be dancing and moving his arms. I have an option also to do the same for the pants. Right. So we can uh, export the pants as well as a thin fabric, configure the um, material so the belt will stay in place, but uh, the rest of the pants will move. I <laughs> like how he's smiling as he pulls his weapons out. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, dude, Lenny, that looks incredible, man. And I and I know we talk about sim versus not sim, and really it's just a matter of preference. Cause to be honest, with if you're making a movie where people just talk, and walk and sit, you don't necessarily have to sim it. Cause to me, to me, whenever you watch a movie, I don't think people go watch it and look at the clothes move. You know, like oh, whoa, it's simulated. Um, people are still interested about the story and stuff, but I know some people really like simulated stuff, so that's why I wanted to show both ways. Because, yeah, that, that looks really good, man. For considering you didn't have to do any skinning or weight painting, nothing like that, that looks incredible. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so, I mean, you guys, uh, we can talk forever, all night long, but uh, yeah, I, I, I got a question from will, I got a yes. question from Style Marshall real quick. Can you swap U Draper cloth in sequencer? Yes, of course. What is it? Oh, like uh, just go, like go, uh, changing the outfit completely. Um, okay, I I owe uh, Style Marshall a tutorial <laughs> yeah. how to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. If you're gonna if you're gonna no, make a tutorial no, later, no, that's I, fine. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Let me let me show you. I'm, I'll be happy to do it. I'm just thinking where would be the best way to do it. 
And yeah, I agree. Dresses obviously have, you know, if you wear, if you have a lot of dresses, then yeah, that makes sense to simulate those. Um. Okay, I'm just thinking what would be the best way to do it. Anyway, so the point is, here's how the the main main approach is like this. Uh, we're going to do. So here's our character. Right click, no, uh, plus track. And you see all our garments here. Pants. Vest. Uh, so I added track for vest. We can add a track for all other garments. Uh, let me see, for example. Um, what do we want to change? Shirt, whatever, right? And then you add uh, an event track trigger. Then, actually, I have it somewhere. But okay, let's let's do it. All right, so we add these tracks. Wonderful. Then. We also can add the track for Draper simulation and also add an event trigger. And at certain point, you want to change something. So for example, here I want to change or even disable this garment. So we add the events here and then in Draper simulation, just the next frame. So one frame, we do something, we change the garment, we enable, disable it, right? And then we just need to go to the next frame and add Draper simulation event to reload, okay? Now we need to configure these events. And right now it's unbound and we go quick bind what we want to do. We want to reset. Yay, we have reset. When you click reset or whatever, you add uh, an event, it will open you this um, director blueprint, just shows it to you. Actually, I forgot already um, um, how to do it more elegant in more elegant way. So you actually can now use this event, call it somehow. Let's call it, um, I don't know, um, garment event. Because each time we create a new event, you will get a mess of all these events in this blueprint and it's it, it becomes messy. So uh, we just will reuse this event, garment event, okay. Save, compile. Now here, properties, but instead of creating a new event, we will try to use this garment event. Um, This sequence. No. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Director's blueprint. Garment event here. This is our garment event, correct? What about this one? Property bind. 
Why can't I see it? Okay, forget about it. Just let's do it. <laughs> let's let's do reset again. Um, reset. It will create another one. I'm sure there is a way to 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 use the same. Sorry about that, guys. Um, probably I missed something. So it will create another event here. All right, save. Doesn't matter. And uh, this one we need to call reload. So again, it creates it in Blueprint. Save. Now we need to uh, change. If you want to change the garment here, you need to specify the new folder where you have your new garment. Um, unfortunately, Unreal, if you if you click here, it won't do anything. So unfortunately, you need to go to your folders and find your garment. So let's see. I might have something here. Really garment and here's some another jacket. Okay. And I copy. Oh sorry. Okay, I need to copy this folder. Go back here. Let's add it here. Nice. Okay, so what's going to happen is that vest will be changed to this new jacket at this point. But for the shirt, uh, Style Marshall asked me, how can we disable it? Let's disable it. Look at this. All this new, no simulate. Nice, nice stuff. Disable. All right, so what's going to happen when we come to this point, the short will be disabled and vest will be changed to another jacket. <laughs> OK. Let's try it, uh, but we need to start the simulation. So let, I think that's OK. OK, let's try. And uh, what is going on? Okay, all, all is great. So let's get a little bit closer. And let's click play and see what happens when we pass this event. Uh, all right. So my, my jacket that I wanted to put has incompatible uh, UV map, but let's try to do it like this. I don't know what will what gonna happen. Nothing happens. Oh, okay, that's bad. But so we we need to be more careful what kind of garment we want to put there. But you you guys, I I believe you got the idea. So let's let's start over. So I don't want to change the garment, but I, for example, can disable it, and I will. Clean this one up. I mean, everything is clear, I believe. Uh, for style, Marshall should be. Um, but if you guys want, I can create very quickly another garment so we can really switch them quickly. It's awfully quiet out there. What's going on? No, we're, yeah, you're good. I mean, style, do you still need... Hang on. Uh, oh, he said you can cache the U Draper simulation so you get better yes. performance. Yes, you can. Can you show... Sure. Um, show, show can, is that possible to show that real quick? How to yes, do that? Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, sorry, you're lagging here. Uh, actually, I think my Unreal is dying. And I might crash any moment. Oh, that's that's something new. 
Um, yeah, go, go ahead and control alt delete, and I'll talk a little bit here. Um, but oh, there it goes. It's back. No, no okay. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So um, again, the U Draper stuff. Why I'm interested in it is, I don't know. It's going to be possible because I think Lenny. How many? How big is your team? Like you have one cloth maker. You said right. Yeah, we, we have one yeah. designer, yeah. we have uh, uh, two or three developers, That's crazy. coders. So it's a small team, right? But really, what? It, it is. and I talked to you about, I think it would be cool to have pre-made, high-quality clothes um, that people can purchase a la carte while using you, Draper. Because at the end of the day, it's going to save you time and it's going to save you money, right? So it's going to save you uh, marvelous design license or clo or whatever um because right now the pre-made assets you have clothes you have in you draper you don't need to use marvelous correct do, um, do you still need oh. marvelous to to use yeah. the one that you have already in there no okay um well so you don't need marvelous you're getting this uh 3d draper right yeah you have that application can... right yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and you can you can modify it there let me close Marvelous. But of course, if you're uh, purchasing uh, ready-to-wear garments from, say, ArtStation or elsewhere, and you want to refit it on your MetaHuman character, uh, then you need Marvelous for sure. Exactly, yeah. So uh, again, and, and, and it was the question that I wanted to ask people if they would be interested in that, you know, for you, Draper, to have pre-made clothes that they can purchase for MetaHumans. Because like I talked to you about, it's been... A year, I think, since the Meta Human Creator first came out, and honestly, the only thing they added on there was the shorts. So again, I don't think they're gonna be adding any clothes there anytime soon. And honestly, mainstream is starting to use Meta Humans. Uh, eventually, here you actually you're starting to see them now being used a lot more. Um, and one of the most frustrating things about using it is just a lack of clothes. You know, like I can recognize. I saw a commercial the other day. They're wearing the hoodie from the Meta Human Creator. So, again, I think I think I'm not alone when I say that it would be cool. I would honestly pay, you know, like per outfit to use you Draper and mm. with Meta Human. And again, that's what I wanted to ask people. Right. Well, of course, guys, uh, give give us your feedback. But as you can see, uh, you can buy some cool stuff from art station and uh, refit it using marvelous designer and actually marvelous designer dropped uh, the annual subscription significantly so you can like 40 percent off if you buy it for a year yeah and, and again i think i think this is still the fastest way to get high quality marvelous designer onto your meta human um mm -hmm. i think so i mean i mean um rudy is here and styles here they they have i think they've been doing it i think the long way so i want to know their opinion because i think it's faster doing it this way obviously there's still limitations when it comes to what kind of outfit you can use because you know we talked about if you want it you know fitted uh you want some you know pretty fit outfit but if you want it simulated you, you just have to be smart on the kind of clothing you get um but overall i think it is the fastest way to be honest watching you do it right now not having to do any weight paints or anything like that it's pretty cool well uh actually f funny thing about with uh you know painting um i, I don't know if uh, faraday are you are you there i'm not sure maybe you're there uh you asked me about um how to add like a handkerchief uh, hanging from the pants you know like from the pocket and uh, i have an idea how to do it but Maybe I'm a little bit too tired to show it right now, but it, it, it's doable as well. So it, it just, uh, you know, be a little bit creative. You, you know, there are many different possibilities. And uh, once you get a hold of them uh, and you know what kind of effect you want to achieve, you can be a little bit creative and cheat a little bit here and there and get uh, the results you want. Uh, so. In this video, I don't know if you guys saw it with the two uh, kind of warriors uh, fighting with swords. And actually, I was using uh, simulation cache here. And 
it, uh, we have this tutorial uh, written on one of the pages, um, but this is how it's done. Um, okay, so first I get my one of my character and I create, uh, I don't care about cameras or lights, anything. All I need is just to configure his outfit and then uh, I create the sequence and I put his animation here. And again, I add uh, for the bottom, uh, a track for a bottom and for the top. So we have here his pants and his uh, jacket. And I add uh, event track, another one event track here. And at the beginning of the sequence, I add an event. And this event, uh, let's, let's make another one just to demonstrate, okay. So are you, are you showing right now how to cache the, the... Yes. Okay, okay, yes. cool. Okay, so here I just type cache. So it creates uh, this event. All right. And so basically I start caching at the beginning of the very first frame. Uh, and we don't need this one. I just showed you how to do it. And the last one, if you go to the end uh, where you want to stop your caching, the guy is dead. Um, and again, you just add uh, another caching event. The, the difference between these two that at the beginning, you specify the folder where you want to store your cache. And at the end, you leave it empty. So it's the same kind of uh, event, but if um, if we see that there is a folder specified for this event, it will start caching into this folder. If the folder is empty, it stops caching. And another important thing is that you should have your bottom enabled simulate simulation should be enabled so first for the first time when you want to cache it actually you turn the simulation on for one garment and let's see where is another one bottom and there is top and you turn the simulation on. all right so this time we just record this simulation with simple, you know, simple rendering. You can use the smallest possible resolution and you just capture moving. And what will happen, it will cache everything into the folder that you specified here. And uh, the same approach, if you just didn't specify anything else, it will put it into the, uh, garment folder so let's see so this is my jacket that i tried to put on our policeman but it didn't fit because it's a different character uh, so this is my jacket and uh, this is the folder inside so if i didn't specify any different path to this caching folder it will save it into this uh, garment folder and this is how it looks like so these are the frames with without cash so basically what that's doing is this is gonna once you cash it, this is gonna give you a better performance when playing it back right yep absolutely so now okay so this way once you record your movie with absolutely no regard to cameras lights resolution nothing you just play it with your uh, by the way um the only one thing is to be aware when you do caching is to remember that everything should be in sync. So if you're doing like 60 FPS, work with 60 FPS or 30 FPS, uh, obviously it will create you a certain amount of frames, right? So if you will create your cache with 30 FPS, but want to then, I don't know, do 25 or 24 FPS to your movie, it's not a good idea. Do the same. Uh, 
or at least it should be even. Like for example, uh, I cache this sequence with 60 FPS, but uh, the final movie I want like slow motion. So I selected one, 120 FPS for the final. That will work fine. But you understand, right? 60, 120, it's okay. But say 30 and 25 is not okay. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so uh, so be aware about uh, sync. Even smallest uh, out of sync uh, thing. Like for example, some people uh, had issue. Like if you just move it like this, that's that's that would be bad, be because it actually start uh, simulating from the very beginning of this uh, camera cuts. So it will miss your starting uh, event for caching. So be careful about it. It should be all in perfect sync. Okay. All right, man. That's pretty cool. Oh, Caching rules. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Couple of more more uh, things. So this way you record your cache, but then to play it, you go to your garment and you turn the simulation off. And another one for the top to turn simulation off. So when when the sequence has uh, these caching events, uh, when simulation is on, it stores the cache. When simulation is off, it tries to play it, play it back. Okay. So then, uh, so this way you kind of create your cache. Then you go to your main scene, um, Berlin Cave map. This is my main scene. Ah, thank you very much. It's not me. That's weird. I haven't seen that. Uh, well, no, it happens. <laughs> it happens. It happens, especially when you have some sequence open. Sometimes it happens. So, okay. So you record the cache for one character. You record the cache for another character. Then you create your beautiful scene with all the lights and all the cameras. And uh, then... Let's open. And then you basically add, come on, come on, come on. Add your sequences and specify cache to play back without simulation anymore. All right. So let's see, where is this? So I have a bunch of different sequences. And here's my avatar. And I have my... Eleni, you know, I got a question for you. Yeah. Somebody's asking, yeah. Spencer's asking, what if what happens if there's no simulation? Does the garment still get driven by the skeleton? It should, right? Well, if you have... Uh, that's actually what we started with. Yeah, exactly. If there, right. no, if there is no simulation and there is no cache... It's just wrapped. It will be, it, it will be uh, you know, based on wrapping, of course. Gotcha. But cool. if you have cache... It will play the cash back. Yeah, I don't have any cash. I'm broke. Okay. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Any other questions? I think we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, with, that's... Uh, that... I, I was talking for two hours straight. That's awesome. It didn't feel like it, man. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so... um. Honestly, if you ever want to come back and demonstrate some other stuff, just let me know. Because like I said... I really just want to put this out to everyone because I think it is the easiest way. Um, honestly, if you've been with me for a while in the channel, I don't really do this a lot. As far as, you know, trying to have people kind of show y'all their product. I'm pretty picky when it comes to that, but Draper, I think, is a very, very powerful tool um, that you can use to customize your meta humans because that's honestly one of probably one of the questions most question type of question i get is how can i customize clothes you know for a meta human and i know a lot of people kind of do it differently you know simulating in marvelous design and then doing alembic import which is man that process right there is insane so it's it's obviously good to simulate alembic right because it's pretty good quality but again some mm -hmm. people really can't afford they don't have the time and the money to do that 
you know. So again, I think Draper. I think that's where Draper kind of comes in. Is it's, you know, it, it you can get some pretty good results as you saw right now, um, with minimum effort. So, but yeah, if y'all don't have any more questions, um, Lenny, do you want to give them your go ahead and go to your page so they can see your email address? Because like I said, I'm really curious to see if people are gonna be interested in, you know, getting more clothes in their pre-made for Draper. Um, right. just, just, you know, pull up your website so they can see where it is and I'll put it in the description as well. Um, uh, but yeah, th okay. thank you all for hanging out with us, man. I know I don't yeah. really do it. I don't do how, it this, how many, this how, much. How many, how many, how many people are there? Uh, we had one time where I had like 50, I think. Oh, cool. Yeah, the last one wow. I saw. Cool. But yeah. And all I'll, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, co contact, contact us here or, uh, our other side is Trimere, or old one. Um. Also contact us, you know, or actually try me YouTube. Yeah, check out their YouTube as well. There's a lot of good yeah. stuff in there. Um, Style Marshall also, his channel that he's using right there, that dude, he's using you Draper as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, dude, I'm going to go get some dinner. Thank you for coming and thank you for everyone who yeah. attended. I appreciate Jay, it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. It was no, a lot of fun, especially preparing this uh, policeman <laughs> suit. Yeah. And uh, I will share it with you for sure, and yeah. we'll do other other stuff. Yeah, as well. we, you, you got that list. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate. Right. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. I'll see y'all later. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.